Um, well, first of all, we got a rather monumental piece of masonry, quite well built, all bonded with lime mortar. Um, it's it's only partially exposed. We've got uh, one edge along here, which is clearly visible. The other edge is under that tarmac somewhere. So it's definitely in, ex in excess of two meters thick at the moment. And we're thinking that this is uh, probably something to do with uh, uh, in some way connected with Kirkwall Castle. Um, so to the east of that, we've then got, um, we had a sub, a sub rectangular cut here that was full of stone, which we've emptied out uh, and it's exposed the uh, faces of two more walls, which are under this area of um, degraded mortar. So we've got one that's coming out from the main, the, the larger wall at right angles, and then another one almost at right angles to it off towards the south. Um, and they're overlain by some sort of uh, later midden deposit. Uh, and it's all associated with further very partial elements of further structures and maybe a flag floor. Uh, we think those large flags are in situ and um, they're obviously slumping so there must be something else in there. Um, there is the possibility of a further linear structure to the north of it which has got a large patch of ashy and burnt material sitting on top of it though some of the stones do seem to be within it. Um, we've got no idea at the moment yet whether that is related to the wall or is a later, later phase on the site. Um, but that, that takes us up to this large deposit of concrete which contains the modern drainage system and that partially covered uh, another large substantial stone wall um, which was at least 1 metre 20 thick. Um, again, we think that's probably related to the castle in some way and butting up against that was an extensive uh, cobbled surface. Um, all the cobbles were laid in the same orientation almost creating one half of a herringbone pattern.